It is so, 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 so good to be here at Lifeline Lodi. Uh, man, I'm excited for it to be here. I'm excited for everything that God is doing here. But before I get into the message, uh, I just wanted to thank uh, Pastor um, the Joneses. Hallelujah, as I like to call them, the Joneses, Mr. and Mrs. Jones. The Joneses. I was still disappointed when you didn't name your son Indiana, but that's okay. All right. Someone like that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, all right, we're going to get it. We're going to get serious now. All right. But um, I am Pastor Josh Vasquez from Living Word of Stockton. My wife and I have been out there now for a few years. Amen. We got a couple of our people in the back over there, and then we got a couple more coming for the next service. But, um, you know, um, we are just excited to, to be here. You know, I, I was very, um, very humbled when, when uh, Elliot asked me to come and just speak to you guys because I know that he's a man of God, and there's only... Only if God spoke to him, then would he allow me to come over here. So I was like, okay. Oh, I got a good one right here. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to jump right into it, and then we'll make it happen because I only got a little bit of time, but I do want to share something with you guys. So if you have your Bibles, you can go with me to the book of Matthew, chapter number 28. Matthew's chapter number 28, and we're going we're gonna to do just a little bit of reading, and I do have something for you guys, and I believe that this is what, what the Lord has, has, has given to me to give to you. Um, and you know, you hear Stockton, you're like, oh man, this guy's from Stockton, and I know it's crazy, it's a little wild and stuff, but, but let me reassure you, I'm exactly the same, hallelujah. So, so <laughs> I, I, I can't really help you guys with that one, but we're going to make it happen one way or the other in Jesus' name, hallelujah. So I pray that God is blessing you, and I pray that as we go through this, God will just speak, speak to you, because I believe that this is a word for, for, for Lodi. And so again, if you have your Bibles, Matthew 28, beginning with verse number 16, and we're going to just do a little bit of reading here, and so we're going to go for it. And I'm reading out of the New King James. If you're there, you can say, I'm there. I'm there. And the Bible reads it like this. It says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came, spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. Even to the end of age, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for everything that you do, God. And I'm just grateful, Father, to be here with, with the living, Father, with people who have given themselves to you and desire to hear and know you more. I pray right now that your presence would be upon us, be upon everything that we do this, this, this morning, Lord. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Again, it is such a, a, a blessing to be here, and, and this morning I kind of titled the message, um, Standing for Jesus, and, and this is kind of one of the things that I was thinking about. It was actually kind of hard, you know, to, for me to come up with the title, because I, I kept hearing God say, you know, just that this church is just, just overflowing, that, that there is a, an impartation of what God has done and who He is inside of the people of this church. I really believe that, that we are carrying a light that the world needs. I really believe that we are carrying something that the world needs in this desperate time, this confusing time, this kind of weird time, if I can say it like that. You see, I knew, so, so one way or the other, whether it's standing for Jesus or being the light or for such a time as this or, or whatever you want to call it, I knew that these were the people, that these people, the people here at Lifeline Loader, are ready to talk about Jesus. You see, I believe, again, that the Lord is going to do something good to bring people to salvation through this place. And I believe that also that your pastors have done a great job, but I also believe that the, 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 the real outpouring, that the overflowing is going to come out of the church pews, that the people that are sitting here within the sound of my voice. One of my very early introductions to church, or rather I shouldn't say church, but rather my desire and my heart to do something for God was worship, kind of like your pastor. My, my desire to really do the first thing for God was worship. My, 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 uh, my father, as, as Mr. Jones was saying, I have a heritage. My dad got, got saved in the name of Jesus. We got saved, when I, and, and, and then I got saved through him. And then one of the first things he says, all right, you know, now it's time. Time for what? It's time to start doing something for God. And so my first one was worship. I loved worship. I started on the drums and then just started doing that. Because there's something about just being able to praise the Lord together, amen? And sometimes even being able to praise the Lord by yourself. But there's this one song that I, one of my favorite songs, it's called The Anthem. Has anyone ever heard of it? Jesus Culture, J Jake Hamilton, has anyone heard it? Yeah, yeah. 
I love it because it's like, yeah, let's go, Jesus. But in, in any case, there's, a, there's, there's some of these words that, that I just wanted to share with you. And it says, wake up, child. It's your time to shine. It says, you were born for such a time as this. It says, this is the anthem of our generation. Here we are, God. Shake the nation. All we need is your love. And then it says, captivate me. And then it goes on to say in the song, it says, I am royalty. I am destiny. I have been set free. And then it says, I'm going to shape history. My goodness, those are some powerful words. And I love worship songs like that where it encourages and empowers you. But shaping history is a very powerful statement. How many know what I'm talking about? Maybe, maybe, maybe uh, want, this doesn't really seem achievable concerning your own lives, particularly when you're thinking about all the things that you've gone through in your past and, and maybe your personal shortcomings or your struggles. You see, this was hard for me to believe also. You see, when you come into the church, God loves you. And God, sh- and God shows up for you in the most dynamic way. Or maybe, you're, maybe uh, you know, you've gone through some struggles and God showed up at the right time. I know I've gone through some struggles and, and God has showed up. And, and God is always outpouring inside of us. And he's always loving on us. And he's always encouraging us. And he's always trying to tell us, like, you got this. Like, don't worry about it. Like, let's just keep moving. I'm here. I'll never leave you, no forsake you. I'll always be there. And all of a sudden you hear, you're going to shape history. You're going to do something great for the kingdom of God. And my first thing is like, me? Like, there's no way. There's no way, God. When I think about myself and the things that I've gone through in my own past, I, I, there's no way that I could believe that me, that I'm going to, like, what am I going to do? What, what, what can I do? You see, if I can just be a little bit transparent here with you this morning, I'm a little bit scared to tell you what I'm about to tell you, but <laughs> God knows. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, my own background before Christ, the BC days, was I grew up in a broken home. We, we are, our parents separated when I was three years old. You see, my mom went from relationship to relationship, and she went going through terrible things, all, all really in, in the midst of it, just trying to take care of us and have a, a foundation for us. My siblings and I had to witness things that, that she went through and that we went through that we probably shouldn't have ever seen, and nor do we ever wish any of our kids to see. And in our tween years and all the way up into high school, it just kind of just got a little bit worse. <laughs> you know, it was just a little bit more crazy. You know, since we didn't have a lot of discipline or any direction, there was really just finding our own way and how to do things. You know, I had an older brother and I was following my brother around and he, and, and he, he was one too that was trying to figure it out. You know, he got involved in, in gangs and things like that. And I grew up in SoCal, so you can just imagine it was a little crazy out there. Hallelujah. You see, we, I started experimenting with a lot of things because why? There was nobody telling me what to do or how to do it. And so we started experimenting things at the age of 10 years old I started doing some things that I I think about if my kids were to do I'd probably smack them upside the head but that's a different story (laughs) hallelujah you know from middle school and high school things just got work you know arrested for shoplifting vandalism tagging stealing uh, cigarettes alcohol you know they even put me through the SoCal version of scared straight you guys remember scared straight (laughs) when they when they would put you inside of this little uh, this little cage and they would have a convict come over you and you better get right man or you're gonna end up like me only problem is it didn't work and it wasn't scary. So it was, a, you know, got expelled from school for selling a what is used to be illegal then is now illegal now. Hallelujah. So, you, you know, living the party life and kind of kind of kind of going through things. And I can wish that it say that it, it stopped after all that. But but it didn't, you know, bouncing around from house to house. That's how I ended up in the city of Stockton. My family was so done with me that they sent me to Stockton. What a punishment. Right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Wait, wait, why are you guys laughing? What the? <laughs> They're like, that's what you get. We know what it is. But my thing was like, I'm ready to go. Like, I, I just want to go crazy. Like, my, my mind was so crazy. I had this nomad spirit where I just wanted to do whatever I wanted, how I wanted, and when I wanted. And when I came to Stockton, it was like, all right, cool. There's, people don't know me here. No, I haven't burned anybody yet. So now I can go here and just do whatever I got to do. But then God had a different plan. You see, the reason I say all these things is because there is also a time in my life when God got a hold of me. There was also a time in my life when when I went through the process of transformation. There was also a time in my life when, 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 when God picked me up when I was in the darkest of moments. There was also the, the, the time in my life when, when it was still confusing and still a little weird, but, but God showed up. There was also a time in my life when, when I was still trying to figure it out, I can even remember getting saved, and, and, my, and my, my dad was, he was having church in his living room at the time, and it was right there in his living room that God showed up, 
And I can remember getting saved, and it was at that time that all of a sudden it seemed like I was seeing for the first time. I walked outside, and it was light. Has anyone ever had an experience like that where God just showed up in their life? And you see, I, I, I realized that, that at that point that God had a purpose for my life. You see, I realized that after even my past wasn't enough, even my past wasn't too much, even my past and the things that we struggle with today, they're not too out of reach where God can't pull you back and use you to shape history. Are you hearing what I'm saying, saints? You see, again, maybe this is not you this morning, or maybe it is, or, or maybe you haven't had a background like mine, but I tell you what, that there is someone in this church or someone outside of the church that still needs the genuine love, real deal of God. Are you hear what I'm saying? You see, again, I, I believe that, that God is going to use you to do something similar, and God is going to use us. You see, I don't, you might be thinking, I don't know if you can do this, but let's just remember what the Bible says. 1 Corinthians 1.27, but God chose the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things that were mighty. And the base things of the world and the things that are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring nothing to things that are. You see, God didn't think, I didn't think that God could use me. But I believe that if anybody could do it, it was him. Hallelujah. You see, let me just, if I can just give you a little bit of this. You see, when we first took over the church, and I'll give you that in a sec. When we first took over the church, I thought everybody was going to be excited for us. It, di it didn't really happen like that. They're, they're ruthless over there in Stockton. Hallelujah. You see, but my thing is when I, didn't, when I found out that nobody was excited for us, I didn't want to prove everybody wrong. I wanted to prove God right. I wanted to prove that his power was sufficient for my life. I wanted to prove that even though we didn't come from a great background and we had to go through struggles and things were going crazy and still were going crazy at the time, I wanted to prove that God's mighty hand was enough to change anybody's life and use anybody for his honor and his glory. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do that. And, you know, because again, I, I, I could have got mad. I was like, oh, what? You're not, you don't got my back. You know, I, the, the SoCal started coming out like, what? What you talking about? But it was more like, you know what? You know, just, just leave it alone, man. I got you. You see, our journey as pastors started in 2010. I was the ripe old age of 26. Hallelujah. My wife was 24. Amen. Now that I'm 28, no, I'm just kidding. Hallelujah. <laughs> You do the math. Amen. <laughs> you see, when God got a hold of us, we be, all, we need, all we knew to do was just to do what God had taught us, and that's to reach out, to tell people about the gospel, to tell people that there was a God that loved them, to tell people that there was a, a, a Savior, that all he wanted to do was embrace them and show them that there was another way and that we didn't have to live like the world says we do. You see, again, we began to start reaching out to the neighborhood. We started feeding the hungry. We would have hundreds of homeless people come. And, man, it would smell a little different in there. Hallelujah. But it was, <laughs> but it was still all good. You see, we, are, we were just doing being the light in a dark place. We had a church right there. on. If you're familiar with Stockton at all, it's east downtown Sierra Nevada Airport Street, one of the worst streets that you could probably be in. I could tell you some stories about that. But, you know, this is the 9 o'clock service. We'll wait those for the 11 o'clock service. Hallelujah. <laughs> You see, see the, I, but, but one of the things we do is we just wanted to pour out into people. God had did something in us like we've never experienced before. And all we wanted to do was to share the love of God to the people of Stockton. We, 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 we just reached out to them. We gave to them. We loved them. We prayed with them. We had events and VBS and a lot of the things that you guys do. We did it all. We had men's and women recovery programs. We did. I was going to the California Youth Authority right there off of Arch Road. I mean, just everything. Why? Because God had did something inside of us. You see. I didn't know what I was doing except being obedient because I know what God had did in my life. I know what he did in my life. And, and I want you to just think about that for a second. You know, again, maybe our backgrounds aren't similar, but I know. I know that somewhere, some way, somehow God has reached down into your heart and he has touched you and he has, he has shown up for your life. And you will never forget the way and what he told you and what he did for you. Can I get an amen for that? Hallelujah. I know that there is a way that God showed up when you were at your darkest moment, when you're in a place, maybe it was a little bit upsetting, a little bit crazy, a little bit, you know, confusing. But I know that God showed up because that's the kind of God that we serve. You see, and like, if I can just change it a little bit, like many of the apostles, the, the, the first disciples, it was all because of Jesus. Jesus, right? What a guy. Hallelujah. <laughs> I want you to just take a second. Just think of the, about the miracles that Jesus did. 
Ooh, a lot of them come to mind. Amen. Feeding of the 5,000, killing of the fig tree. You know, that was a good one, right? <laughs> Mrs. Jones thought so. Amen. <laughs> He was causing a spiritual revolution. And oh, yeah, not to mention raising people from the dead. Hallelujah. And what about every favorite, every, every sinner's fir- favorite, favorite miracle, turning water into wine. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, man. Amen. All right. Yeah, here we go. We use grape juice, though, so we're, you know. You see, let me ask you something. What do you remember or what do you think about Jesus for? What miracle comes to mind when you think about Jesus? You see, even though Jesus done so many notable things that I believe that one of the the things that he did that was greater than all of these. My answer is in our opening scripture. And Jesus came and he spoke to them and he said, all authority has been given to me on heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And my personal opinion and my personal belief, despite what Jesus did and all the miracles that he performed and the signs and the wonders, the greatest miracle, in my opinion, is what he did was impart to the disciples so that it can be imparted into us. Are you hearing what I'm saying, saints? I want you to think about that for a second. He imparted into these 12 men and extended uh, uh, women, hallelujah, that it came all the way down to us. You see, they, these disciples, they laid the foundation of our very existence. It was these unlikely men and women that carried the truth of the gospel to the very end of their own lives. I mean, just imagine for a second, they did it all. They, they went through persecution, they went through hardship, they went through ridicule, stoning and, and, and execution. They, they, they went through it all, saints. They went through all these things, why? To carry the truth of what Jesus Christ has done for you and for me and you see they had such an impact on the world that it was even recorded that their inner circle was in the Quran that that they that these men were steadfast in their faith you see although we can easily recognize them for these mon- for these mo- momentous and monumentous accomplishments that's not always how it was they started a little bit afraid their leader teacher master was no longer with them. The Bible says in John 20, 19, that then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, the disciples had dis- assembled for fear of the Jews. Has anyone ever felt like that? Like even after you've seen God do what you did, what he did in your life, and you just felt like, oh man, I'm not sure if I can take this one. I'm not sure if I can go that far. I'm not sure if I can make this happen. I'm not sure if that's, I'm not sure if I can reach that far. I'm not sure if God can do this. You see, again, the, the, the disciples were the same way that, that when Jesus had ascended into heaven, all of a sudden they were left alone. And now it was time for them to start being who God said that they were going to be. Yet they didn't start as powerful and mighty and, 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 and doing things even to death. They started as cowering and a little bit afraid. You see, this was one of those times that the enemy likes to make our problems so big that sometimes we forget the power of God that's inside of us. You see, there are times in your life when God is going to say within you, he says, okay, now's the time. Now, no, 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 go, 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 go. Has anyone ever felt that when you're, they're like, okay, call them or pray for them or do that. And you're like, "Mm, let me pray. Let me pray for a second. Hold on, hold on. Go to church early. Go to both services. Ooh. We start praying and doing our, well, I don't know what you do, but hallelujah. You see, there are, there, have we ever felt sometimes when we felt that, that there was a, an issue, a problem, that there was a situation that was a little bit bigger than we were able to handle? And as a new Christian, as a new believer, you weren't sure if you were going to be able to do it. You weren't sure if you were going to be able to conquer this. You weren't sure if that person was going to show up to church. You weren't sure if you were ever going to get saved. You weren't sure if you were ever going to fall in love with God. You weren't sure if you were going to kick a habit or addiction. Or you weren't sure if this relationship or your marriage was, was going to work out. You, you weren't sure. And it's in those unsure times that the enemy loves to come and say, are you really sure it's going to happen? 
You see, in our problem, it can seem, though, that Jesus is far off and even not even around. And it's in those times the Bible says that the enemy is like a prowling, like a lion prowling around, seeking whom he may devour. And the whole goal is to forget and make you forget the power that actually lives inside of you through the spirit of God. The whole goal of the issue that you're facing right now, whatever it is that you're going through, is so that you can forget that there is a living God inside of you that has the power to do anything that he says or wants or needs to happen in in our lives for his name and glory's sake. Amen. I don't know if I'm speaking to anybody today, but amen. We're going to go for it still. Hallelujah. You see, because of the power that we possess to change the surroundings around us, the enemy tries extra hard to discourage you. Why? Because you are going to shape history, saints. Again, I said it in the beginning, and I'll say it again, that I believe that the people of Lifeline, I believe the people here are ready to burst with the glory and the power and the voice of God, that there is a city that's out here that still needs there is people within your own home within your own families there there is people here that want to hear what you have to say you got the goods hallelujah you got the pure pure hallelujah they don't know what that is but hallelujah I hear you bro past life past life amen you see again because of the power that you possess to change your surroundings the enemy tries extra hard to discourage you But we're not alone in this fight. Thank you, Jesus. John 14, 25 and 26 says this. These things I have spoken to you while present with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance all the things that I have said to you. Has anyone ever heard the phrase or the saying, the cavalry has arrived? Oh, good. All right. Okay, cool. The cavalry has arrived. And when I first heard that, I was like, oh, man, there must have been like this crazy battle that, that, some, that happened in history. You want to know where that actually came from? The, 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 the term the cavalry has arrived is actually a movie term. It's actually like a movie term, a, a, a TV show term. It wasn't something that somebody actually heard like in World War II or Vietnam or anything like that. It wasn't like that at all. It was, it was a movie term, and it was something that existed. And so, and so I started to think about that, like, that's kind of weird, you know? Like, like people are, know that, and they know what it means, but it's kind of funny that it, it came from, like, like, a movie. And then I started to think about the movies. I was like, ooh, movies. I was like, wow. If I can use this one example. Does anyone ever remember the Avengers, the Endgame? I know this is an old example, but I'm using it because it's the only re- it's the only real movie that actually caught me off guard. We remember the we remember how it ended, right? There, you know, Hulk finally gets the gauntlet and he has all the the stones and he's ready to snap his fingers to bring everybody back, and he actually does, bink. But all of a sudden, instead of them to f- sit there and figure out if it actually worked. The war starts happening. Thanos comes and he starts killing all the Avengers and everyone's going crazy. And just at that moment, when you think that it's about to end and when you think, man, the movie's done, like they're all dead, like it's, that's it. The portals open up and all of the armies from all the different tribes and all the different movies and all the different places, they just show up right in the nick of time. And the reason why it was funny to me is because I totally forgot I totally forgot that he even had snapped his fingers and brought everybody back. Why? Because I was so involved in the battle that was happening. I was so involved at all the lights and, you know, you, you know it's like, like blinking at you and there's things, lasers and fire and all. You're just so captivated and captivated by what's happening. You see, sound familiar? You see, sometimes the enemy loves to keep us in this captivated mindset that our issue the battle with Thanos hallelujah the battle with whoever it is that you battle whatever trial you're facing whatever it is that you're going through its job is to keep you so captivated by that that you forget that there is a cavalry that will arrive and that cavalry that's ready to come on your behalf is the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us that wants to show up anytime that you got something going on in your life. Anytime there's an issue or anytime that you feel you can't reach out or talk to somebody about Jesus. Anytime that you feel that you can't do something for the kingdom of God because you're to this or your past was that or you don't speak well or whatever it is. There is a real living spirit that lives inside of you 
you and it is ready for any situation that you are going through right now, Amen. saints. Amen. The, the power of the Holy Spirit. God, le God is leading you through these uncertain times. God leads us through the times when we feel so captivated by our issue, by our problem. Again, like I said, that was the only time that ever happened to me. I was like, oh, I forgot that he snapped his fingers and everybody came and, and started helping in the war. You see, and I think that it's the very same power that we will rely on and the disciples had to rely on to propel them beyond their circumstances. You see, the disciples, again, were there afraid and, and scared, not really knowing what was going to happen next because their Savior, their Master, had ascended into heaven. They left, and everything was trying to get them to forget that Jesus had told them that they were going to receive power. And so e even though Jesus sometimes feel afar off, or maybe it does, you don't always feel holy sometimes, or sometimes it doesn't feel like God is around you, there is a spirit that lives inside of you. It's the Holy Spirit, the spirit of our living God. Hallelujah. If I can just read you something really quickly, a little bit of reading. Acts chapter number 4, 8 through 13, it says, Then Jesus, filled with the Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, If we this day are judged for a good de deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has ba been made well? Let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands there before you whole. Verse number 11. This is the stone which you rejected as your builder, which has became the chief cornerstone. Nor is it their salvation in any other. For there is no other name given to, given to us under heaven, given among men by which we must be saved. Verse number 13, and this is the key. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled. And they realized that they had been with Jesus. Oh, my goodness, saints. It's taking, it's taking every effort in me just not to go to 10 right now, Mr. Jones. Like, just <laughs> blah! Boo! You see, there is a power of God that lives inside each and every one of you, saints. I know sometimes it seems like it's hopeless and we're not enough and we'll never get it right or we're not even sure if we want to get it right. I mean, there's, there's just a lot of things that play in our mind and in our, in our thoughts and, and what happens in, and when we go through life. But if there is any time that you need the power of God in your life, it's in the deepest and darkest of times. If there is any time that you need to be able to speak to somebody about Jesus, I know you're probably thinking about somebody right now that, that needs to hear the encouraging words of, the, of the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, I believe that, again, that, 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 that there, you guys are going to need to have three services pretty soon when the people that are in this house start to overflow with the power of God that lives inside of you right now. Right now as we stand saints you see again there is a spirit of God and, and you don't have to be wise or educated or anything like that I mean I, man don't even get me started about how uneducated I am hallelujah but I can tell you this that there is no matter what requirement you think you need the power of God that you need to overcome the circumstances that you're in are already inside of you saints the power of God lives inside of you see I love that when he stood before all these officials when he stood before the priests and when they stood before them who are a lot wiser than them they said man we realize there's something about these people right here there's something different about these guys and it was why because they had been with Jesus they went from lost sheep to righteous shepherds leading the way for the entire world to be changed by the gospel of Jesus Christ why because they were going to shape history oh my goodness God has a way of giving us the ability to overcome even we don't, when we don't feel like it. Hallelujah. God has a way of helping us to give, or excuse me, God has a way of giving us the ability to overcome even when standing in the face of what seems like uncertainty or even uncertain death. Hallelujah. You see, our ability to navigate comes from the love, faith, and trust that we have found in God. As we come to a little bit of a close here, hallelujah. This is the first close. I have two. No. <laughs> like they said, what does it mean when a preacher looks at his watch? Nothing. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 
the book of Esther. We know the book of Esther, and maybe you don't. Esther had been made queen to the king of Persia. And there was a man named Haman, and he became the prince of princes amongst the Persian officials. The Pers he was an official in the Persian court. And now it was a time where he made it, so say, you know what, because I'm the prince of princes, I'm going to make everybody bow down to me. I want to make everyone bow down to me. They're going to have to stand right here. And who wouldn't bow down? Mordecai, a Jew, a people of God. Mordecai said, I'm not, bow I'm, I'm not bowing down to him. I'm not doing that. The word got around to him on. And he made a decree that says, you know what? I'm going to get that guy. I'm going to get Mordecai. But instead of just getting him by himself, I'm going to wipe everybody out. The Bible says that they, they made a decree for men, women, and children, taking them all out. Mordecai hears this, this plot against his own life. And he sits in front of the king's court, the king's gate, and he starts weeping and crying and praying and fasting. And Esther, who was a, a, a Jew, came and heard and see, saw Mordecai. What was going on? Mordecai begins to tell her, Esther, this is what's happening. This prince, he made a decree. He's ready to kill us all. And after explaining the situation, the miracle that follows is somewhat synonymous with the verse. Esther 4, 13 through 14. Don't think that just because you live in the king's house, you're the one, you're the one Jew that will get out of this alive. If you persist in staying silent at the time like this, help and deliverance will arrive for the Jews from someplace else. But you and your family will be wiped out. Who knows? Maybe you were made queen for such a time as this. Whew. The word's powerful. There are people in our lives that need the truth of the gospel. There are people in your lives. Maybe it's within your own house. Maybe it's your husband. Maybe it's your wife. Maybe it's your parents. Maybe it's your kids. There are people that, are, that need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. That there is a God out there that loves them. And maybe you weren't the person that needed redemption from drugs or a twisted upbringing. But having the truth in our lives is what people need. You see, you are what God is going to use to shape history. You are what God is going to use to change this church. Not that it's wrong. Please don't think that. You are what God is going to use to let this continue to be a light in Lodi. Your pastors are carrying everything on their back. They want it all because they know the goodness of God. But they don't want it all for all sake. They want people's lives to get changed by the glory of God. And this is going to be a ministry that's going to do it. Think about for a second the people that need saving. The people that are in danger from a decree of the world that's ready to take them out. The Bible says that Esther says, I'm not sure if I'm able to do this because you can't go into the king's court unless you are allowed to, unless you're called. Mordecai, that's when Mordecai put it on her. All right, you're going to get it too. But she says, you know what? Let's do it. Fast for me. Pray with me. In the next three days, I'm going to go to the king's court and I'm going to plead with them on behalf of my people. And because the Bible's the Bible, we have a great ending. The people are saved. Haman gets put to death. I mean, things change. Even in the midst of making a stand, it will feel as though you can't do it. It will be a little bit scary. But think about the people that you are standing for. Think about the lives that are being changed. I can only stand before you here now because somebody told me about Jesus. My dad, my dad was a pastor, but I didn't know him until I was 20 years old. We didn't have a church upbringing. I, didn't, I, I came from that seat right there because somebody decided to speak the truth of Jesus Christ. God has filled you with power, the power of a spirit, for such a time as this. 
It's time to stand for Jesus. I want you to stand with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. If I could just pray with you really quickly, is that all right? Yeah. yeah? With every eye closed and every head bowed in reverence to the Lord today. Father, we just thank you so much, Lord. You are good. You are awesome. You are worthy and worthy to be praised. And right now, Father, you have, you have imparted into your people a light, a power that the world desperately needs right now. There is confusion. There is lack. There is misunderstanding. But right now, Father, each and every one of these people within the sound of my voice carry the truth. Carry the light. Carry your love. I pray that you would equip them, embolden them, God, to stand for Jesus, to speak life, to shape history. I thank you, Lord, and we love you. We put it, everything in your hands. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people say, Amen. God bless you guys so much.